How do you speak clearly and intelligently when you're put on the spot? Well, there's one framework that I teach any of my clients, and it's called PREP. PREP. You may have heard of it. It stands for Point, Reason, Example, Point. And when you have a framework that you can follow as you're speaking, you're not going to get lost with your words. And more importantly, it'll be much easier for your audience to follow along. So let me demonstrate how you can use this framework. Let's say that an executive were to put you on the spot and say, can you tell me what are our partner priorities for this coming quarter? So here's what you would do. The first thing you would do is you would pause. Okay, you would pause and you would look up, not down, but look up. Do not say a word. I do not want you to say no fillers, no fillers. Okay, and I want you again to show that you're confident, that you're being thoughtful, which is why you're looking up rather than looking down. And then as you're nodding your head, I want you to paraphrase the question back at them. So you could say, what are our partner priorities this quarter? And you could ask that question rhetorically, but what you're doing is you're buying yourself time in case you're not comfortable with the silence to then gather your thoughts. And here's what you're doing when you're gathering your thoughts, gather thoughts and compile what we call bluff. Bluff is an acronym and it's a military communications acronym that stands for bottom line up front, meaning how would I answer the question in one sentence succinctly? And that's your point. That's this right here. So whenever you're put on the spot and you're struggling to come up with the right words to say, give yourself time and think, what are the big par partner priorities coming up this quarter? So you could say, what are the big partner priorities this quarter? Well, our number one partner priority is to collaborate with X company. Okay, very succinct. We're just saying this is our priority. It's a one sentence point, okay? The next thing we do is we then say the reason, right? We're here. Now, how can we keep this reason tight in one or two sentences? What you can do after you've given, so this is the bluff, right? That's the second point. The third is what you should do is come up with that reason. And that reason, again, one or two sentences, you can signpost it. So what do I mean by signpost? Signpost means that you can start by saying the reason why, and that just cues your audience what they're about to hear next. It serves as an intriguing preview. The reason why Company X is our number one partner priority is that they offer us the most reach. They are highly in demand by our customer base and they give us great strategic leverage. Okay, so notice that I'm giving the reason as tightly as I can. I know all this information, but I'm also slowing down, enunciating each word and feeling in control. Okay, so when you give that reason, we now segue to the example, right? And the example can be either a data point, an anecdote, or both. And the idea behind the example, again, you don't always have to use it, but it's quite helpful, is that it activates both the left and right side of your audience's brain, right? Because when you are giving a data point, it clearly appeals to their logical, their rational side. When you give them a story, it pe appeals to their emotional side. So in this particular example, I might elaborate a little bit. So I'd start it off by saying, our top partner priority this upcoming quarter is with company X. The reason why we are prioritizing this partner is because they have the biggest reach, they are in most demand from our customer base, and they offer us strategic leverage. An example of why this is so important to us, this particular partner, is we had company Y, one of our biggest clients, 
struggle using our own software because he was spending over an hour trying to utilize it to his advantage. And we furthermore saw that this was hurting our retention with that particular account. They were churning massively and we were losing more than $300,000 in ARR to that particular account. So if we were able to shore up our partnership with Partner X and deliver a product that could solve his particular needs, we would be on track. And this is one of the key examples of many of our customers who have been struggling with this workflow. Okay, that's the example. Notice what I did. I incorporated a small story about a key account and I gave a quantitative data point around the amount of annual recurring revenue that we would be churning. So then once you give the example, you then wrap it up with your point. And that point is a restatement of why you believe we should be prioritizing partner X. It's a restatement of this original point, okay? But what you're doing is that you're making that sink in with that executive, your audience. Now, once you've done all of that, the question becomes, what do you say next? Well, what is a key part of this framework is the S. And this is something that not everyone does, but it goes from helping you go from good to great. And this stands for segue. Okay, segue. You want to either segue to a new topic or, and especially when you're speaking with executives, you want to segue to an open-ended question. So I'm going to put this right here because our board is getting crowded. Segue to an open ended question. Okay. What does that mean? Well, instead of asking, do you have any questions that solicits a yes or no answer? The conversation ends. Your goal is to engage with your executive. So what do you say? You end up saying a question that starts with what, how, or why? And usually in this case, it's great to say what, so you could say, what questions do you have? I'd love to hear what reactions you have. What, where's your mind at? Where's your mindset? What are you feeling? What's your reaction? I'd love your feedback. I'd be happy to address any of your points. What questions do you have? You see how that naturally turns it back onto them? They can ask wherever they want, and you can go into more detail directly answering their question, again, using this framework. That's the beauty. You can just follow along, make sure that your sentences match up to the framework. And when you do this, I promise you'll come off as more confident, more credible, and frankly, more in control. So if you can use this framework, the next time that you're put on the spot, ask a question that you don't immediately know, remember, give yourself time and follow this formula right here. Let me know what you think. Thanks.